Hello, my friends, and welcome back to a blind let's play. It's Attorney Investigations 2, Miles Edge with the Prosecutor's Path. My name is Lesbur, this is your Stories Gaming Channel, and today, today, Prosecutor DeBest comes into his own as he faces his father. Now, Edger asked me an interesting question, which was, who do I think the mastermind is? And I will tell you what I told him. And I know this is gonna sound completely insane because obviously the mastermind is Dogen. But what if Dogen is, what if Dogen isn't the mastermind? What if he is just the blunt instrument or the tool behind everything? So that made me think, who could it be? It's probably not Blaze the best because he's being used. Or he's the guy who's like at the top, but he's not the tippy top. It's not going to be Dugan. It's not going to be Patty. So who am I left with? And I came up with the answer of Nicole. Yes, I am suspecting, probably foolishly, since it probably is definitely um, not Nicole, but I am suspecting Nicole. And the reason I'm suspected Cole is, even though she's 20 years old, she could be lying about her age, first off, okay? Um, but secondly, she was involved in the first case. If you remember back, and not only was she involved in the first case, but she was able to get off without any repercussion at all. She was just let go. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, further, uh, she was tailing us and when the thing went boom, she fell down because she was listening on the, uh, on her device. But what if she wasn't listening on a device to listen to radio signals? What if she was listening on a device because she was listening to us and following our line of thought? And then when the boom happened, uh, she wasn't there. And the reason we know she wasn't there was because when the police found John Marsh, they did not find the mastermind. So the mastermind was not with John when he was found. Further, the mastermind said the words, yes, see, I think it was, which is a very unusual speech pattern. Now the yes, see could very easily be blazed the best. And it probably was blazed the best in somehow some form. But, I just think that he escaped from prison three days ago. I mean, the, the obvious answer is it's got to be uh, Sarando again, right? That's the obvious answer. But I would not be surprised. Okay, I would be surprised. But I'm still suspecting that maybe, just maybe, Nicole Swift is up to more no goodery. Is that a word? Sure. <laughs> than we may have suspected. Hope you all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with, uh, we'll restart the case here. Justine, not yet. We're not through yet. There's still something we haven't examined. Hey, you're still not giving it. Struggling in veins not cute at all, you know? It seems Sebastian hasn't given up either. I was just thinking the exact same thing. The last item remaining. Is it trash or is it evidence? If we don't examine it, we'll never find out. The item I'm thinking of is... Oh, the bell, obviously. The bell itself is a final piece of evidence. What are you talking about, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought we didn't find anything on the bell. Um, that's right. Oops, my bad. <laughs> Certainly veins that good, you know? Can't you see there is nothing at all? The last piece of evidence. There might be something remaining there. There's no other option. We must examine that item. The item I'm thinking of is... Well, if he's talking about the trash, and it's not the bell, 
and we don't have the knife, then logic deduction deducts logic logically speaking. <laughs> it's gotta be the newspaper, right? We're still not done examining the newspaper that the bill was wrapped in. It seems that Sebastian has seen Mazia as I do. Well, well this is just wonderful, you know? So wonderful it is to cry for. Is it desperation or simply reckless abandon? Are you really going to, uh, pin all your hopes on a worthless scrap of newspaper? Hmm, we won't know for sure whether or not it's worthless until we examine it, will we? Sebastian, let's examine it post haste. Okay. Oh. My. God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at this. D. E. A. T. H. That's what was on Blaze's hand. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. This is still against Bell. There isn't a single stain on it. We probably won't find anything on the bell. Let's try examining the newspaper. Indeed. Is this a handprint? There's something greasy on here too. Is it oil? Judge Courtney, we'd like to request a fingerprint analysis on this paper. Could you please someone summon someone from forensics? We don't need to do that. We got death on it. Your request is accepted. Contact the lab at once. Reporting. Those are definitely fingerprints. However, it's from a glove. What? Come on, we know that. Hey, didn't I tell you? Something but a worth a scrap of paper. Just think about it, you know? When handling important evidence? What kind of idiot wouldn't use gloves? Oh, wait. Wouldn't that be you? The idiot who doesn't know when to give up? Ah, well, that's pretty harsh. Talking to your son like that. Well, what's wrong with calling an idiot an idiot? Well, if you want to be the best, I mean, you have to be heartless. I have no compassion for worthless individuals. Not even my own son. Pops, I... You know, you've always called yourself a genius prosecutor, haven't you? Didn't I explain to you this morning why you were a genius up until now? Oh, that's right. It was all because of me. <laughs> because of my authority. You always be protected by people like uh, Courtney over there, and uh, of course me over here. Uh, now you get that stinging face of yours out of my sight. Stinking? You know? Now that I think about it, all oh, that stench might it just suit you perfectly. You know, just keep it away from my nose. My eyes! Well, they'll start watering even more than they already are! Objection. Wrong! You're wrong, Pops! Uh, Sebastian? What are you talking about? You're the one who sinks, Pops! It's you, not me! What? You haven't noticed, have you? You smell, Pops! So much that you can't even hide it. Mr. Edgeworth, try smelling the handprint on the newspaper. The smell? Hmm, it smells like oil. I know something that smells just like it. Come to think of it back then. It smells like motor oil. Maintaining that motorcycle must be Blaze's hobby. That's right. 
The smell proves it. It proves that the culprit who hid the evidence was. It's no good. I guess I can't become the best after all. Oh, come on, I believe in you. I'm too soft. I could never be so heartless. Oh, don't say that. Come on, buddy, you can do this. I believe in you. I know you can. I just can't bring down my father with my own hands. Prosecutor to best. Uh, summon your courage. Become a different prosecutor from your father. Was it that what you decided? Uh-huh. We are prosecutors. And as prosecutors, we stand in the courtroom. In that case, isn't it our duty to shed light on the truth? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Exposing crimes and bringing criminals to justice, even if the criminal is your own father. That is your duty as a prosecutor. Didn't I promise you that if you had the courage to stand up, I will show you the way. And if you cannot do it alone, then we shall do it together. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Allow me to present the evidence that connects this handprint with my father. It's the glove. It's the glove. Because if we look at it, clearly says death. And it's got dirt on it. This is the smell of motor oil, the kind used for maintaining motorcycles. Both myself and Mr. Edgeworth have smelled this exact same smell before. Blaze the best. It was in your garage. Hmm? And what did she say, these fingerprints? Well, they have a rather peculiar shape. The five letters. That spell out D E A T H. It's exactly the same as your own gloves. Or if this is in a different universe and we're in the universe of Yu Gi Oh!, it would probably spell out F I N A L. We get that reference? You're cool. If you don't get that reference, you're still cool. But anyway. Ha ha ha! You can buy gloves like that from anywhere. Doesn't prove a thing. Is that really the case? Well, that's not the only thing that these two pieces of evidence have in common. The fingerprints on the newspaper that was used to wrap up the bell. And Blaze's mechanics gloves. This is the unmistakable similarity that they both share. Well, it could be the letters or it could be just this. It's two different things. This is the unmistakable similarity that these two pieces of evidence share. Hmm, I'm not quite sure where this unmistakable similarity is, you know? Hmm, even if you don't understand, I do. But Mr. Edgeworth, I don't understand either. Hmm, so that wasn't it. Mr. Edgeworth, let's look closely at the fingerprints on the newspaper again. It should definitely have a similarity with the glove. Huh, as I thought, glove isn't evidence at all. Is that really the case? That's not the only similarity. Like I said, it could be one or two different things. Wait, that's not it? Huh? What? 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 That would clearly be the uh the words. It's not this. It's not the words. Take that. What am I missing?
Uh, look closely at the fingerprints on newspaper again. Okay. It should definitely have a similar layer to with the glove. And it's not the letters. I don't understand. It's not the patch. It's not the letters. I didn't mean to do that. I, I want to look at the. Um, I want to look at this, and I and the game wouldn't let me. That's not what I want to look at. What the heck am I doing wrong? The unmistakable similarity they both share. With this skull? What am I doing wrong? All right, before I die, I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then I'll come back. Hopefully I remember to cut the uh, save this time. All right, uh, let's see. There's an unmistakable similarity that we'll share. And it's not D-E-A-T-H. Not whatever this is. Maybe it's the A. See how the A looks slightly like worn? T does as well. Like when you look at the letters, A is the only thing that doesn't look the same. when you stop to save you come back a little smarter I don't I don't really know why that's a thing I just know that the a does look smeared so is that corner of the letter on the uh, on the newspaper if you examine the imprint left by the letter a you'll see it's unmistakably from this glove what? And that's not all. There is one more item we must take note of. Namely, these dirt stains. I suggest we do a comparative analysis of the dirt stains, the newspaper, and the glove. If the contents match up, then it will prove to be decisive evidence. Bailiff, please have these dirt samples sent to forensics for analysis immediately. Garg! Edgeworth! Sebastian! You lowly prosecutors! You have any idea who I am? Yeah, dead man walking. Pops, you can't run away anymore. It's been proven in court that you concealed the evidence. And that you try to cover up for the defendant. You're saying that I'm guilty? That'll be sent to prison? Me, Blaze the best? Couple of snot nosed punks are gonna make me disappear? Ah, there must be some mistake. Be a man and admit your crimes? Do you really think you can survive if I'm not around? I, I'll be fine now. I thought I wanted to become the best prosecutor so I could get your approval, Pops. But when I was kidnapped by your men and stuck in that dark room, I started thinking, I am truly powerless. I despaired and averted my eyes from the truth, but... At that moment, Miss Edgeworth stepped in and showed me the way. 
And now, I'm no longer just a child chasing after his father's approval. I become capable, and I can find my evidence all on my own. He said the word right, too. What? My man kidnapped you? Oh, wow, were you? Pops, I'll show you the truth you never know through this trial. Sebastian! How dare you speak to me like that? You should have just stayed as an idiot son. You may have hated me to the very end, Pops. But I, I've always looked up to you. Thank you for everything up until now. And goodbye. You! Since when did you? All you've ever been able to do was depend on me, Sebastian! It has been established that the evidence was concealed by Blaze the Best himself. A judgment regarding his concealment of evidence shall be delivered at a separate trial. The missing chisel and knife still have yet to be found. However, once the search of the waste disposal site is underway, they will surely be discovered. And the knife will be found? What will happen to me if it's found? Heh, <laughs> no need to worry. You'll simply receive the punishment you deserve for your crime. Grr, punishment for me? Please, what in the world are you doing? You, 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 you! After all, you boasted about being able to grant your own truth and not guilty verdicts. That's why I contacted you immediately after the present incident in the first place. And to make matters worse, you even kidnapped the wrong kid. I just can't believe this. You really, really, really are completely useless! That was certainly a violent outburst. But you heard her, Pascoe did the best. Yeah, she got flustered and said a bunch of important stuff. Right? Indeed. That's correct. Although he still doesn't seem very sure of himself, I'm sure he'll get there. Very well. And with that, the court is adjourned. That was lame. What? Huh? Who are you? Yeah, I thought that's who it was. Judge Courtney, still too early for a happy ending. Lengzi says, the end of the trial is not always the end of the case. And who might you be? The name, Shi Long Long. I'm just a humble lone investigator. Do you have some objection with this trial? Ah, not a chance. The defendant there has a heart as black as the moon this night. Wow, that's very poetic. Link, don't tell me you're the one from 12 years ago. You got it. Ain't this nice? Now you're finally going to prison where you belong. 12 years is a long time coming for a suspended sentence, don't you agree? Agent Lang, what are you talking about? The SS5 incident from 12 years ago. It's a case I'll never forget. Okay, we got a new case now. SS5. 12 years ago. Heard quite a lot about 12 years ago. Well, a lot has changed. It all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my father were close friends. And our clan protected the president's life. But then, he suddenly changed. It's as if he became an entirely different person. Nowadays, he doesn't even have a shred of faith that the police force is saying pa. Twelve years ago. I wonder what went on then. Might it have something to do with Lang's father and President Huang? Patricia Volin, didn't you blaze the best? Back then, the two of you killed off the Long clan. 
killed off the Lane Clan? What? Urgh. Were you involved in the incident 12 years ago? That's right, I was. However, I'm not here to chase out the ghosts of the past. I'm here for you, Justine Courtney. Mummy. You and one other. Ah, all the dots. What the heck is going on? John! Miss Courtney, you're coming along too. As a suspect in the murder of the President Zhang Fa, Dijuan Wang. I'm not this again. Agent Lang, what evidence to you? Settle down, Mr. Prosecutor. The investigation has only just begun. And yet you're already trying to get someone in prison? We're going to inspect the crime scene with the suspects in attendance. Agent Lang, did he get his hands on some new pieces of evidence? If you have any objections, then you can tag along as well. I shall do just that. Ah, I was really liking you, Lang. Now I'm sorry not to like you again. The end of the trial is not always the end of the case. There are still many mysteries yet unsolved surrounding the murder of the president. Namely, the true nature of the giant monster and... Then come and get me. I'll be looking forward to it. Well, that is, if you can bring me to justice, but I hardly doubt that. The true identity of the person on the other end of the phone. Did we continue? All right, well, um, obviously, you know, we're about 20 something minutes in. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and we'll go a little bit further. April 6, 2.52 p.m. outside the Grand Tower, temporary film lot. At least I get this awesome music. I really love this music. Uh, um, could you uh, please give it a rest already? The heck? I'm telling y'all, it's best for y'all's sake to come clean. The staff has the lips sealed shut as the reporters continue their tenacious negotiations. If you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, I must ask you to vacate the premises. Pretty sockety, copper. Y'all couldn't even stop Mozilla's invasion. Not only did they secretly raise the giant monster, but now the staff is trying to cover it up. Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters yet the film lot. But ain't you said you done saw good of yourself? Sure, I saw it, but it's not like we were keeping it at the film lot. Mind if we butt in? Not sure who said that, it was probably lying. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, and Jen. Oh, y'all come here to search the monster too? We're searching for a criminal, not a monster. Lazy sees. The darkness inside a criminal's heart can be lucky to a monster. Well, when it comes to killing people, criminals aren't much different from monsters. Hey, Agent Lang, this is a problem. I can't let outsiders enter the crime scene. These are all key figures in the case. I'd like them to be here when the investigation resumes. Agent Lang, regarding what you said about resuming the investigation, where do you intend to start? We'll start by reviewing the case. Today, the body of the President Wong was found here at the film lot. The President's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eyes of his bodyguards and ventured outside. And that night was the last time he was seen alive. It was then when he met with you, Justine Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. 
So, why did you meet with the president? That I cannot say. You can't tell us, even under suspicion of murder. Yeah, it's got to be something to do with uh, John, I imagine. Can't say? Why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll only be more suspicious. Ha! She must have a reason to claim up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of one whole day after Judge Courtney met with him unaccounted for. So Don't be so impatient. We're gonna fill in that blank right here right now. The evening on that blank day in question is what's important. What happened here last night? So why don't you tell us, John Marsh? Ah, uh, me? We knew you were here last night. What? John was here? Between that little misty testimony and the footprints we found, we can easily prove it. John, you were rehearsing here last night, right? Uh, you were spying on me? Ah, uh, um, I'm sorry. I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late, you know. Uh, mind your own business! Whoa, who's was that? John Marsh, that young lady was worried about you. You will not speak to her like that. Uh, sorry. How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way that you speak? Is it just me, or does Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? She seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Are you listening to me? And earlier as well. <laughs> just there lecturing him just nonstop. You know, you know what I haven't thought of? That would seem weird. Oh. So I was about to say, I hadn't thought of, what if Dijuan Hong and Courtney were in a relationship and John is their son? So John could be the son of Courtney and Dijuan Hong. Although he's kind of old. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Because it very easily could happen. But. I've been thinking you know. Courtney's only 26. It's kind of weird that she would have a 13 year old son. I mean it could happen. But there could be other explanations as well. However what if. John is Courtney's son. But Courtney. Is Wong's. Daughter. And John is his grandson. I've seen way too much into this, aren't I? Yeah, I am. I'm just wildly amused by the fact that she keeps lecturing him over and over and over. <sighs> you should always bear that to mind, no matter the occasion. Can we get on with the investigation already? Sorry, I'm theorizing. Ah, uh, pardon me. For Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be her motherly side. Agent Lang, do you suspect John? All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? And I want to know who killed him. I'll do whatever it takes to find out. It seems the president was like family to him. John, would it be alright if we asked you a few questions? Eh, sure. It's fine. I've got nothing to hide anyway. 
Now, one of the other things that we could have is John could be, uh, what's the guy's name? Gustavia. I almost said Octavia. Uh, John could be Gustavia's son. I mean, I, I don't think the game's just going to mention that he has a son that disappeared and yet nothing's going to come of it, right? Am I looking too much into that too? I probably am. I, I need to stop this. John's first. <laughs> Let's get to it. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot. So I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so, uh... Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own. That's all. I, uh, do it all the time. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. You're rehearsing alone late that late at night? John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at the hotel. You called him? And now about what time was that? I believe it was around 11 p.m. I require him to call me every night. That's a rule whenever he stays away from home. Ah, the truth is, I was at the film lot during that time. So you lied to me! Ah, I'm sorry! Now I'm really, now I'm really sorry to think that Miss Courtney is, uh, his mom. Because she's coming off very motherly. Miss Courtney sure is angry. I think it's admirable that he practiced on his own, even if he hid it from his own mom. I'm sure she was simply worried. Who knows what could have happened to him out alone so late at night. And in reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? Let's look at the evidence. Um, yellow stain on clothes. Is yellow stain on clothes? Aren't those the same yellow stains that was on the gloves? Could that be oil? Oh. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> Taken yesterday. Monster footprints not visible. That was at 11.05 p.m., but that was like last night. Um. So the monster footprints are there. He wasn't rehearsing. You see how he has his arms out like that? Look at his eyes. He's afraid. And there's a spotlight there. Yeah, I don't think he's rehearsing at all. I think he saw something there or someone threatened him. See, and there's that same yellow substance. Okay. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. John, you said you didn't feel well. Could you tell me more concretely what was wrong? Ah, uh, that doesn't matter. I wasn't feeling real well, all right? You weren't feeling well? Maybe you drank too much milk? What? I had you. Ah, uh, no. I mean, that's not it. Why well, could chug? Yeah, he certainly can. That is pretty incredible. So, he didn't feel well because of his stomach. When I was young, I was told that chewing milk makes it easier on your stomach, you know? Chewing milk? What? 
Then this conversation is over. Anyways, I made a few bloopers. How would you chew milk? You're either drinking like really old milk or you're freezing it. Either way, I think that's kind of weird. Uh, they're reshooting the scene today, so... So, they plan to reshoot the scene today. And you were practicing for that last night. Uh, my mistake caused a lot of trouble for the people around me. I'm a pro, so practicing that much more is natural. Hmm, he certainly does have an admirable sense of responsibility. John is incredibly dedicated to his craft. He didn't even make any major mistakes in those bloopers. But he said it would make the movie just a tiny bit better. Ah, eh, shut up! You don't need to go around blabbering about stupid stuff like that! Ah, uh, I'm sorry. If only he was a little more cooperative, I'd have no complaints. Ah, uh, anyway, that's what happened. Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own, that's all. John, about your testimony just now. John Marsh, don't I always tell you? If you're going to practice by yourself, you have to let me know beforehand. I, I know. My time to speak was completely stolen away from me. I shall ask you once more, John, about your testimony just now. But you know, John, I think that's really great. Will <laughs> you stop? Hmm, uh, again? I've been putting in an ass effort like that will make someone even more talented. You go from a little thief to a middle thief, and then somebody can become a great thief. He's not trying to be a thief, Kay. I'll be doing my best, so you do your best too, okay, John? Mm-hmm. Now then, if I may. John, do you often rehearse in that way? At last, at long last, I finally get to ask my question. Uh, I do it all the time. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. There are no mistakes in that testimony, correct? Uh, of course there's no mistakes. I was just a normal, peaceful night. Nothing out of the ordinary happened at all. A uh, peaceful night? How can you say that when an incident like this has occurred? Okay, he is still a child. Please don't get seriously angry. So, there was nothing out of the ordinary. He doesn't know anything at all about the incident. That's the impression I'm getting. But isn't there evidence that shows something did happen last night? Yes. I don't have time to waste dealing with the child's lies. Let's present the contradiction. Okay, so... Uh, anything out of the ordinary. There was something definitely out of the ordinary. Like his death. But I don't think that's it. Um, I'm thinking... It was... No, it's not showing anything out of the ordinary. What if we go with the, um... The videotape? Bingo! First try. Much better than earlier. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That's a lie, isn't it? We have evidence right here. Ah, uh, could that be? That's right. It's a video you recorded of your performance. Ugh. What? You're telling me you have video from last night? Exactly. And in this video, there is clearly something that is out of the ordinary. This is a monster's footprint! Would you say that monster's footprints are commonplace on a film set? John! Why did you conceal this video from us? Uh, no reason, really. Hey, pup! This is no joking matter! I like how he calls him a pup. You had a reason to hide it, right? John Marsh, answer him clearly! But, Mom? Well, he did call her Mom. I, I didn't want anyone to see me rehearsing. <sighs> huh? Hmm. In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing you practice. Uh, yeah. 
You got a problem with that? You're sane. That's why you hit the evidence. John! Eep! How much milk do you have in that bag? Eep! Quit nagging me! You've already busted me! What more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there, but I just practiced and heard home. How come you're so calm after finding those footprints? It's a monster, you know? A real live monster! I thought it was just a part of the set. Besides, there's lots of other weird stuff going around here, too. He's suspicious, Chief. The kid's really suspicious. You're right. The smell of a scope stinks to high heaven. Ah, shut up. We're done talking. Objection. We're not done here yet. Oh, uh, what now? The monster's footprints weren't the only unusual things that happened last night. Besides the monster footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? Could be luck? This shows what happened here yesterday. And, uh, just what exactly does it show? You don't understand, do you? You are still a child, after all. Uh, I don't need some guy who's less intelligent than a child telling me that. Ooh! <laughs> it seems that wasn't it. Let's review what happened to you last night one more time. Yes, I won't let this child make a fool of me any longer. Why get so worked up about that? Anyways, just what was it that happened last night? Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? Could it be the, uh, the dead body? No? Really? So it's not the dead body. It's not the footprints. It's gotta be one of the Mozilla heads. There we go. Okay. I got there eventually. A monster's head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Is that true? I told you, I just practiced a bit and then I went back. I don't know anything about Mozilla's head falling or anything like that. Or do you have evidence to show that I do know something? There certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that fell after John had already gone back. If there's no evidence, then like I said, we're done talking. It seems that John doesn't really want to talk about last night. Could he be hiding something after all? Wait up! Hmm, Agent Lang? Hehehe, <laughs> says I thought. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. This video backs up my logic. Huh? Is there someone, something in the video that relates to the case? Yeah! Take a good hard look at the monster costume on the top left! The Mozilla costume? I never noticed it before. What about it? Try comparing it with the one over there right now! Hmm. It looks like it's just hanging there limply though. And the zip on its back is zipped up tightly. What I miss? I miss something. Zipper on its back? <gasps> oh my god. That was in front of me the entire time. And I never realized it. You're right. You're right. Oh my gosh. How did I never see that? What? this discrepancy is. Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video, the zipper is clearly open. That's right, someone was inside. What? Mr. Powers? Is a costume? Oh, sorry, that's Edward. <clears throat> Mr. Powers is a costume zipper, usually. It's always zipped up tightly when it's done in use. Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember my logic from before? Two nights ago, Courtney pushed the president off the roof and killed him. Afterwards, she stuck into the film lot to hide the body. In here? 
Would it be easy to hide a body in a costume or behind all this equipment? Then, all she had to do last night was retrieve the body. You're saying the body was hidden inside the costume. Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney, two nights ago, you pushed the president off the roof to the tower. You then hid the body inside the monster costume. I, I didn't know such thing. Say what you want, but you're the only one who could have done it. That should have already been proven impossible. The film lot was locked at the time. Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. And what if there was an accomplice? What? I'll tell you my reasoning, so listen up. Alright. Showdown with Lang. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through his showdown, but then before we press him, I'm going to go ahead and take a break there. Mother and Son Theory. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them then hid the president's body. Inside that monster costume over there. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's not a bad theory. It, it very well could be possible. You'd think this crime had such an elaborate plan. Well, if you're killing the president, you would kind of have to have an elaborate plan, Edgeworth. To take the life of a nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? Okay, um, I'm feeling not very happy right now because I just said what Lang said. I mean, I, I, I've said on the show before, I like it when the protagonists are on the same page, but that's not the same page that I want to be on. John would never take part in such a crime. Not so fast. You're the one being suspected. Yours will carry much weight. I wouldn't think those two had sufficient motive for something like this, though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we don't know about. You were the last one to meet with the president, and you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? <sighs> Judge Courtney, is there no way for you to tell us your secret? My apologies. I just cannot, no matter what. However, when the time I can't talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So if you could please... Believe you? <laughs> is that what you want to say? That's what all criminals say. And you, pup, if you got an explanation, hurry up and spit it out. Huh, I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Both mother and son will talk. You're still gonna defend him like this. It's true. Judge Courtney's actions are a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with the motive for murder. Yeah, that's right. The motive for murder can wait. For now, let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact that these two are the only ones who could have done it. All right, my dear friends. I want to thank you for everything. I love you all so very much. No one YouTube community and all of YouTube you are. Can't say how much I appreciate you all. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic day. We'll be back with some more Ace Attorney Investigations too very, very soon. And until then, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.